Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, thanks, and adoration to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly called Jesus. And I would like to say my double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who have taught me this truth that I know today, and peace to the house of Israel. This lesson, I'm going to make it very, very brief, and it's going to be a little continuation to where I stopped yesterday. So I noticed that I didn't speak about certain things that I wanted to speak about. So I'm just going to add them into this video. So yesterday, the last video, let's put it like that, I spoke about the Igbos and the Yorubas. So we know that there are many other different tribes in Nigeria as well, like the Shakiri, the Ijo, the Benin. So anyway, all these different tribes, they all came out of Igbo and Yoruba. This is fact. Okay, now I wouldn't go and start making different researches and going here and there. You can make the researches yourself. Um, for example, I'll just share um, the patriarch of the Yoruba race, as people know him as Odudua. Okay, they said Odudua came all the way, you know, from the sky, according to how they tell the story. They said he came down by a chain from the sky, you know, and he had, was it 10 or 10 children or seven children, which later they became different kings of different kingdoms, like the kingdom of the Benin, which we're going to speak a little about the kingdom of the Benin, okay? So, well, this is just total ignorance and total madness that this man came all the way from the sky. They actually forgot about everything, just like part of the causes the most I has kept on them. Okay. And so actually what happened is um, Odudua didn't come from the sky. They forgot where Odudua came from. So they just put it like that, like it came from the sky. Anyway, Odudua was uh, was an escaping. Was was an escaping. How do I put it? He escaped during the seventy A.D. destruction of Jerusalem by the Emperor Titus. That was in the video we did yesterday, and he made his way with his family all the way down to West Africa, where he built his kingdom. Okay, and from there, he gave birth to different children, you know, and he was seen as their patriarch, you know, and they referenced him and started worshipping him. So this is still part of the madness the Most High has kept on the sons of Israel. That's if you read from the book of Deuteronomy 28. So Ududua didn't come from the sky, and that's just total madness like they tell it you know and one thing i would like to emphasize a little bit on is um a great elder from the great millstone that's on um, the gms watchman i think in the past he made a video um about the yorubas okay and he pointed some pointing some points out you know, the similarities of these Yorubas, um, their tradition and what it has to do with reincarnation, okay, and how it is biblical. So this is going to be a different lesson. But what I want to point out, I don't know if it was the one who made mention of this, how similar the language, the Yoruba language is, it is with um, the Egyptian language, and which is true. There are many words in the Yoruba language that are very, very similar to the Egyptian language. 
for example, um, peace of mind or so, the Yorubas say alafia. Okay, in the Egyptian tongue, it will be alfia. Okay, um, um, there are many different words too. You could just you know make this um this comparison. So that's just the word that came to my mind now. And the reason why I'm saying this is this proves the fact that they once lived in Egypt with the Egyptians and had something to do with the Egyptian culture in the past. Just like, you know, as written in, was it in the book of, um, I can't remember now, but the story of Joseph, you know, when the Israelites actually, you know, moved to the land of Egypt and they that became slaves in the land of Egypt. And that's just by the way. So now let's read from what we have on the screen. And here we can see a photo of a sort of slave master and his slave right there. Okay, so this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 7, which says, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. So, well, brothers, you really need to pray for the spirit of the Most High to open your eyes, to open your heart, to understand this mystery. Okay, right here again, you know, as you can see on the image, it's just explaining what this verse is speaking, you know. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. So these people actually, the Edomites, they came from the mountains of Caucasus, which their first habitation was the Mount Seir. This is going to be another lesson to talk about. They came and they are being a sword in the hands of the Most High to pull us back in place with the Israelites. And remember, Israel is a stiff-necked people. No matter how you try to teach them things, you know, it's incredible how they saw the miracles in Egypt. And, you know, when they were being led out of Egypt, once they get hungry, lead to or something happens, the first thing they start thinking of is, you know, making other gods and you know just doing things that gets the most high angry you know and they that put curses on us so let me just show you on some images so this is this is the great walls of benin okay and this walls as if you read from from Wikipedia, they'll tell you these walls are older than the walls of China. And they are also very, very huge and very complex walls, which kind of reminds me the walls of Jerusalem. Okay. So you can tell these people actually had some knowledge and crafts made. And, you know, the Benins have of all this. As a matter of fact, the Benins started making um three three dimensional artworks even before before the Greeks. They actually thought the Greeks had um three dimensional art pieces before the Benins, but you know they found some pieces in the land of Benin, which actually dates older than that of the Greeks. Which proves to you that these people actually came all the way from the land of Israel, you know. And if you read through the book of um, Exodus, um, you know, there are many people that the Most High kept the spirit on from the tribe of Judah, from the tribe of Dan, from the tribe of different tribes, you know, to be great craftsmen, okay. So they actually carried this culture with them. And let me show you one more picture right here. This is what it used to be. This is where the British, you know, coming to bow down to the king of Benin. And this is exactly what the white man does. You know, the so-called white man, which is the devil. 
um, they will come and try to act like they are humble before you and all of a sudden before they start penetrating and destroying your kingdom you wouldn't even know so they come like you know very humble people with good intent you know they they study they study everything about your kingdom they study your security system and everything and once they start attacking it will just be like moving your eyes okay so this is what they've been doing you see you know get the children of the negroes and expose them like like animals in the zoo this is in belgium and this is not many years ago this is just I think it's in the 1900s okay so 1970 something i think so it's not really long ago this is what they actually have been doing to we negroes they classify us as animals you know they have this perpetual hatred towards us which as i said earlier it's going to be a different lesson talking about this edomites who they are but please don't get me wrong because according to the scriptures you know the sons of israel are going to be spread all around the four corners of the earth and they would come in different colors okay they would come in different colors just like this image is telling you if an israelite get married to an Edomite, even if the child comes out looking like the Edomite, that child is an Israelite because according to the scriptures, you are the seed of your father, okay? So I just wanted to get that clear, okay? So this is what we actually started doing, you know? As you can see, this image, very important image. This is when the white man started bringing the so-called graven images of um, Madonna, Mary, okay? Started telling us to worship all this. And you know, Jake's sons of um, Jacob, they are quick, very quick to worshiping different idols and, you know, going after the things that they are not meant to go after. So let me just use the opportunity to read from the book of second kings book of second kings chapter 17 verse 15 which quotes and they rejected his statues and his covenants that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them and they followed vanity and became vain and went after the hidden that were round about them concerning whom the Lord Yahweh had charged them that they should not do like them and they left all the commandments of the Lord Yahweh their God and made them molten images, even to calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal. And, you know, the people of Benin, just like other tribes of Nigeria, the Yorubas, the Igbos, you know, they are very, very well known for doing all this wickedness, you know making different and you know worshiping different idols you know so this is this is their culture this is something they love to do you know they do blood sacrifices sacrifice to all these idols and you know so if you're asking the question why we have been on that captivity where in nigeria and you know we've been there like that all these years no progress you know this is the reason because we forgot the statutes and commandments. We forgot who we are. And, you know, we started following different gods, different worships. And you see all these idols and all these stuff. They learned them from the lands around them. The sons of Ham, you know, they learned them from ancient Babylon, from the Edomites, you know. And they turn it to, them, to, to, their, to their religion. Just like today, 
the so-called white man has brought Christianity to them and Islam, you know. And the sons of Jacob are freaking out, you know. They're doing worse than the people that brought these religions to them. They don't seek out the truth. They just take whatever comes their way, you know. They believe their pastors so much that whatever their pastor tells them is the final, you know. They love their so-called Jesus so much, but would never realize that they are worshipping the false image. They are worshipping the wrong doctrine, okay? They will be surprised on the last day because, you know, according to the scriptures, two-thirds of the house of Israel will be destroyed, you know? Two-thirds of the house of Israel will be destroyed because they are stiff-necked people, they hate the commandments of the Most High, their God, who has done so many miracles before their eyes. They hate to follow the ways of righteousness, but they love to follow after their oppressors. Just like today, everyone wants to become something in this society, you know? To the extent of people going to sell their souls, you know? To become athletes, to become musicians, you know, sons of Jacob would do whatever to to be respected in this society. To the extent that many even go and you know do blood sacrifices with their with their relatives, with their family, with their mothers, with their fathers, with their children, you know, all for this money. You know, so you see. The Most High is great, and you know he has every reason to destroy two thirds of the house of Jacob. But where his mercy is forever is another lesson, you know, because these two thirds that will be destroyed will come back again in the new kingdom, you know. So this is where he has mercy forever and ever on the house of Israel. So I'll just want to quickly close up this lesson, but before I do, let me read from the book of Second Chronicles. Oh yeah, that's Second Chronicles um Chapter 7, verse 14. So I got this um this verse from a brother who dropped it on the comment board on the previous video I did. And I thought this is really a fantastic um, scripture to add to this lesson. And it reads, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land okay so if my people which are called by my name who are his people his people are the israelites so we can also we can prove that in many many scriptures that you know the people of the most high are the israelites you know so for example let me just let me read from um from the book of um psalms there is also a book in psalm 50 but i can't remember the verse Okay. So here, Psalm 55. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness. For Yahweh his judge himself. Hear, O my people, I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. 
So you can see the people of the Most High are the Israelites. We can also still, you know, get lots of um, scriptures that proves to you that this book is actually dealing with the Israelites and no other nations. Okay. So we can also see from the book of um, is chapter 78. Okay. Verse 5. Which quotes, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. So you can see the most I deal is only with Israel. Okay. The most I deal is only with Israel and exclusively with Israel. So let me just give you also from. The book of Matthew. The book of Matthew chapter 10. Verse 6. So this is the son of the most high. Yahweh Shai himself. You know. Talking to his own disciples. And telling them who they have to. Who they have to spread the gospel to. And he says here from verse 6, Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. Lost sheep of the house of Israel. It didn't say go to other nation. It didn't say go to every nation. It didn't say go to everybody. It said the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the covenant is actually with the Israelites. So... Back to the scripture, to the previous scripture, which was Second Chronicles. Then we're going to close up with the scriptures. Um, Second Chronicles chapter seven verse fourteen. A oh, nice one from brother, from the brother right there, from the brother Yahawada. So if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. So, this is it, my dear brothers down there in Nigeria, going through all the hell you're going through right now. I'm just only going to, you know, tell you this is just the beginning. Things are really going to get worse. There is going to be famine. There's going to be people are going to starve, you know, more bloods are going to be shed. According to the book of Matthew chapter 24, you can go there and read the signs. Okay, these are prophecies that are meant to come. But those who put their trust and pray to the true name of the Most High, which is Yahweh and his son, Yahweh Shai, okay, and put to the best of their abilities, you know, practice to the best of their abilities, his commandments, and come out of all these false religions that the sons of Esau has, you know, tied them with. If they can do this, they are guaranteed protection from the Most High, okay? They are guaranteed his care, okay? And that is the only solution. That is the only solution. You can hold the Most High by His words because everything that He has said must come to pass, must surely come to pass. Okay? So, you trying to look for a new king in that land of Nigeria there, um, trying to, you know, have a revolution and all those things, that wouldn't save you. It wouldn't help you. It's rather going to lead more to more blood shed blood of sh uh, shed oh see sorry i'm just it's a slip of tongue it's going to lead to more blood shed so i pray the most i you know opens your eyes and helps you to understand the truth behind all this and i pray the most i turns the hearts of those whom he has ordained from the beginning to understand these lessons and follow his path and give them, you know, 
knowledge to understand everything and come back to the flock, to the fold of Israel. And with this said, I hope you all was edified. And I am going to close up with this lesson regarding my brothers in Nigeria. And I would say, I'd like to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai. My salutations to the House of Israel, double honors to the Apostles and Elders of Great Millstone, Shalom.